Several clergy. Uh, was, was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say about that guy? Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the latest edition of Views on the News. And we have our usual panel of wise and witty people, starting with Tercia de Plessy from South Africa. Hello, Tercia. Frank, Hello, John. Lo Hello, John. Frank Lovell from Kentucky. Hello, Frank. Dr. Ty from Tennessee. Hello, Ty. Good to see everybody. Esther from the Midlands of the UK. Hello, Esther. Hello. And Guy from the north of the UK. Hello, Guy. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Right, plunging straight in to the first item of news that we need to review. The UK Foreign Secretary, James Cleverly, he was speaking at a security conference in Bahrain, and he said that Iran and Russia were threats to the security of the Middle East. Today, the Iranian nuclear pro program is more advanced than ever before, and the regime has resorted to selling Russia armed drones to kill civilians in Ukraine. Now, what do you think about that? I don't think much of it. I, mean, no. I think we've known they've been doing this for a while, uh, that is to say, selling drones. And uh, I think I think it's been suspected that the the nuclear, uh, as it were, uh, progress is made, being made there as well. So it's, it's not news, is it really? It's not hot news, no. But I agree with Frank. It's not good news either. Hmm. Now, the, what what Russia has that Iran would be interested in is uh, nuclear technology, particularly hmm. bombs. So it's a it's a and serious uh, relationship, I think. Yeah, indeed. Well, cleverly, I don't know how aptly named he is, went on to say that the Iranian people are demonstrating against decades of oppression. Meanwhile, their rulers are spreading bloodshed and destruction across the region and as far away as Kiev. Britain is determined to work alongside our friends to counter the Iranian threat prohibit the smuggling of conventional arms and prevent the regime from acquiring a nuclear weapons capability. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but that's what he's pledged. Mm. Should his name be truthfully? <laughs> Instead? <laughs> Cleverly, not truthfully. <laughs> try it. Yeah. Wait and see. <laughs> okay. So... Sticking with Iran, two prominent Iranian actresses have been arrested for publicly supporting the anti-government protests. Mm -hmm. Henga May Ghaziani and Katayun Riahi are accused of collusion and acting against Iran's authorities. Both women appeared in public without their headscarves. Ooh, naughty. I've, um, so yesterday I was on a different uh, stream and we had someone, uh, from, I don't know if you know the Atheist Republic, uh, mm. Armin yeah. from the Atheist Re Republic, he was uh, on there and um, he showed some videos of people actually um, taking it upon themselves to find these uh the, I think the imams the mullahs these people the ones with the turbans yeah. right and they're actively removing the turbans oh. the public, right as a sign to say if you're going to force women to um to tie the um so you know we're gonna force you just just yanking it off their heads there was even a video of someone with his turban on, but then had a different wrap. He's wrapped it 
round so that nobody <laughs> can come and yank it off. But, you know, I don't support violence. I really don't um, think that being violent to these people um, is the answer. But I can understand how people have got to that point. Did you hear about the 12-year-old boy that was killed? Where was no. this? In Iran. No. I didn't hear about that. So no. he's, he's 12 year old. Um, oh goodness, if I can remember his name. Um, he's, he, he's one of the victims of the Iranian um, unrest. Mm. And he, 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 this is a young boy who wanted to, he wanted to go on to become, I think, is a scientist, a builder, something. I'm not sure. Well, all of this was shown on the stream yesterday, and it's so heartbreaking when 12 year olds have to lose their lives because of uh, the unrest. Uh, several other people as well have been yes. killed. I think the, the death toll is now 50 something, as at the last time. Well, many injured, but death toll is about 50 something odd. And I thought that it was number more. might increase. I yeah? thought it Is was it more? more. I think Is so. It, yeah, but, I thought uh, it was greater than that. Yes, but what what you're telling us is that um, probably the security forces were responsible for the death of this twelve-year-old boy. Yes, I think so. Mm. I think so. I'm not sure the details uh, of this young boy. I uh, just heard about it yesterday, and I really haven't done the investigation about it but yeah just well you're right about the clergy in iran having their headgear disrespected i'm going to save a little clip i've got for the end of the show because it's quite funny. okay mm -hmm. right so moving on still i think in iran the football team captain esan haj safi he, of course, is um, he's played in the Iranian opening game against England in the World Cup being staged in Qatar. And, uh, of course, we all know the result was six to England and two to Iran. Mm -hmm. um, but he was speaking to reporters before the match, and he said the players, the Iranian team, support those who have died in the unrest we have to accept that the conditions in our country are not right and our people are not happy so i think he's very brave to say that and i i fear for what might happen to him when he goes home yeah yeah i agree he may be, he may you be do fun. know that the iranian team didn't uh, that the Iranian team didn't sing along with the national anthem. Yeah, that, that was the first time, but they did in the second match, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Frank, you were saying. Frank. Well, the, that fellow maybe shouldn't go home. Yeah. Mm. Safest yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm. He may have laid the foundation for uh, a claim for asylum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just yeah. by virtue of having said that, uh, and mm -hmm. if I were him, I, I would try that out and see if I couldn't stay. Yeah. That's good advice, I think. He went on to say, before anything else, I would like to express my condolences to all the bereaved families in Iran. They should know that we are with them. We support them and we sympathize with them. We cannot deny that the conditions in my country are not good. We are here, but it doesn't mean that we should not be their voice. We must not disrespect them. Whatever we have is from them. We have to fight. We have to perform the best we can and score goals and present the brave people of Iran with the results. And I hope that the conditions change to the expectations of the people. So obviously his heart is in the right place. Hmm. For... For anyone struggling to emotionally connect with this, especially if they're in America, and uh, any American listeners, we had a period of time, you know, for four years where we had a president that was very much trending us in the direction that the the voting body of America did not want to go to, but the Electoral College decidedly forced us down. And it's caused irreparable damage in terms of representation on the Supreme Court. 
in terms mm. of attitude towards minorities, Mexicans in particular, Chinese people with regard to the COVID virus that being called the Chinese virus or the Chinese yeah. flu. Science has gone impacted, climate change um, mm. policy has been dramatically impacted. And as an American, you felt like someone was taking something that you love, something that you've dedicated your life to and, mm. and putting it in a direction that you didn't want to and driving full speed towards it. And yeah. as a, as a able-bodied free thinker, and for many of us who are a part of like a silent or more silent majority, we were very scared about the, the conditions where our country was going. And so imagine being in Iraq where that's already been the course for yeah. generations. Right? Yeah. 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 And now you have like these kids who are brought you mean up in Iran. Right, right, right. I'm sorry, Iran, who had the promise of more, who had the, the capability of seeing like this is what we could do if we just get together or get rid of these certain sort of ideas or address these certain ideas or 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 stance dogmas or closed mindedness. And I, I have like this genuine sense of like forlorn empathy for people who are put in that position mm. where it's like yeah. a political body dictating the course of the culture that people are forcibly a part of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I strongly sympathize with that. In fact, I keep saying, not my government, about the things that are happening in this country. Yeah. So there's a Colombian singer named of Maluma who featured alongside Nicki Minaj and Miriam Fares on Tuco Taka, which is the official FIFA Qatar World Cup anthem. And he was interviewed in a, in a live interview uh, on Israeli public television when he was asked, don't you have a problem with human rights violations in Qatar? And he responded, that was something he couldn't resolve, adding that he'd come to Qatar to enjoy life and enjoy soccer. So what do you think? Should he be more, uh, I don't know, outspoken? Or can he play the not my fault card? Hmm. That's a bit tricky because uh, some, some people some people have completely boycotted uh, some people have completely boycotted the World Cup because of the views that they have, and I I I would say just tread carefully. Um, you know the the risks you stand the risk of, um, you know I don't know being detained, being treated uh, somehow. I don't know what will happen, but you know just be careful. That's what I would say. I wouldn't I wouldn't be voicing things out if I am not sure how safe I am, right? I would wait mm. until I'm in a safe place, a safe country before I make my uh, my views and opinions heard. Well, it's, it's just the, trouble, the way I would Yeah. The trouble is he's already sort of committed support to Qatar FIFA World Cup event by singing their anthem. And this may affect his career, his reputation may be damaged by association yeah. with their non-human rights government. You don't know what his intentions are. Sometimes when people do things, there might be some hidden agendas and you know intentions um, behind all of that, and it, which eventually will be made public. But for now, you don't know. And... Oh. Mm, Tessia, you wanted to come in on this. Yeah, I have a slightly different view. Um, Esther is correct that one cannot judge people's intentions, which is why I think one shouldn't try to judge intentions, but by but evaluate, if, if judge is too harsh a word, evaluate these people's actions. And um, I, I just feel a little bit uncomfortable uh, with the stance that this person is taking, and it, it's a it's an interesting discussion to be had as to yes, if I boycott the World Cup soccer, it will have no effect on what happens in Qatar and what happened to the the workers who literally lived in conditions 
comparable to what it was like for the Jews in the uh, and political prisoners in the Holocaust. But mm. I think I think one owes uh, oneself and the world at least then to say no comment. And and there is such a thing as being um, guilty, not guilty, but um, who one associates with yeah. does say something about what one believes in. So while yeah. I won't judge anybody's intentions or his character by what he does um, and by who he works with and by who he uh, agrees to be um, from, as, as for me, I, I have... Paid um, by. Yeah. I think who he be needs to be paid, paid by. More people had higher standards. Yes, yes. It's a tricky area, isn't it? Where where there's a, a crossover between entertainment, which includes sport, in my view, and politics. Uh, obviously, sport can influence people's attitudes, but politics is such a dirty business. Does it really want to be tainted by any association? Sometimes, sometimes some sports people have um, intentions of getting into politics. Yeah, they, that's true. They, they, people have been known to make the crossover from mm -hmm. when they retire yeah. from sports into yeah. politics. But like I said, you don't know what his agendas are. You don't know yeah. what. You've immediately you know. of Imran Khan, the great there cricket, you know. cricket, yeah, yeah, the cricket. Yeah. came okay. president of Pakistan. I think ideally, I think ideally, one would be wanting to congratulate those people and encourage and support the people who are making a stand and being very clear, like the Iranian team, you know, took a very brave stand. Those mm -hmm. kind of statements, I think we can uh, applaud. But I think it's a bit difficult um, uh, to to sort of criticize people who don't feel quite able to to do that. Often, out yeah. of yeah, uh, for their own safety. Yeah. Yeah. It is a personal decision, isn't it? I suppose. Mm -hmm. So here's another example of the same thing. A former Welsh football captain, female team, has said that she felt intimidated when she was told to remove her rainbow bucket hat. The Welsh uh, football contingent don't wear um, baseball caps, even backwards. They have these bucket hats, and there's there's a variety of them that is rainbow to indicate support for the the um, you know the LGBTQ plus people. And she was asked to remove. She was told, in fact, that she couldn't wear that in the World Cup stadium in Qatar. Mm. Now her name is Laura McAllister. She's a gay woman and a past FIFA Council candidate. And she wasn't pleased to be told what clothing to wear. And she, she's she been interviewed. And then in the interview, she admitted that she smuggled the hat into the stadium and wore it anyway. Wow. Well, good for her. She's a very brave lady. That, that's brave, though. I mean, I think that's one of the countries where you can be killed without being accused of murder if you kill someone gay. I, I don't know. It's a, it doesn't have a good reputation. That kind Brave. Of Brave indeed. But not everyone has that sort of anti-Qatari attitude. One Qatari spokesperson, I suppose you could call him, has appeared on screen saying that when will the Westerners realize that their values aren't universal. There are other cultures with different values that should equally be respected. Yeah, I think this is a very interesting question because I think we, we argue, and I think we should continue to argue, that our values, that namely human rights values, are universal. Uh, and and I, think, I think we should engage with that uh, argument and go through each value and and uh, identify you know and try to argue out which is the best value can i can i Good ask point. a very um a very lame question you know when they say the west yes <laughs> can i ask who yeah. consists of the west 
Yeah, right, what do they yes. mean by that? Do they mean Japan, which is, yes, you know, yes. depending which way round you view the globe, it could be on the east. <laughs> it's crazy. When, when, when people, when they start talking about the west, the west, you know, you tend to um, to lose the focus altogether, right? Mm. And assume that, oh, this is uh, uh, Western society when this, yeah. this, I'm sure uh, the US is part of the West, mm. the UK yeah. is part of the West, yeah. Yeah. but mm. geographically, geographically, mm. they're, on, they're poles apart. So, yes. are we just these people in the West? How, how, how do you, you know, what I, I don't even know what to say. No, well, it doesn't have a, a, a precise I, I, meaning, does it? I think it's fair. And I, I, the, the, the West is, is not united anyway. There are lots of no. voices right. within the West who would agree right. with the sort of anti-gay and anti-sexual e orientation yeah. equality stance that Qatar yeah. makes. No, yeah. I, I think that's a fair point. But, yeah. but it's a useful, it's a useful um, shorthand, isn't it, that everybody uses? Mm. Yeah. Not perfect. Okay. So, America, the U.S. state of Colorado, a very horrifying, horrendous shooting. <clears throat> Five killed, 25 injured, when a gunman opened fire inside a gay club, Club Q, in Colorado Springs. He, he was brought down by two heroic people who managed to subdue him. And uh, he's now in custody. But the horrifying thing about this is what a Trump lawyer name of Jenna Ellis has said. Just watch this and be gobsmacked. Even more tragic than untimely death is that the five people who were killed in the nightclub that night, there is no evidence at all that they were Christians. And so assuming right. that they were not, that they had not accepted the truth of the gospel of Christ and affirmed Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life, they are now reaping the consequences of having eternal damnation and that is far far greater and we should be having that conversation instead of just the tragedy of what happened to the body we need to be talking about what happened to the soul and the fact that they are now in eternal separation from our lord yes. and savior jesus christ and that that conversation is what should happen and that is what people should fear genuinely yes. not what anyone can do, do to the body but ultimately what happens to us in eternity. Well, that, that's just pure sermonizing mythology and superstition, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. outrageous that a person like that, who's a a lawyer, should be should be spouting that kind of stuff. But um, mm. you know, it's what you expect, really. I suppose in, in that country. Really. Speaking of people believing really bizarre, crazy things, I always think it's weird when people shave off their eyebrows and then draw them back in slightly angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, I mean, listening to that just reminds me of, you know, where I've been, my my beliefs. Once upon a time, I shared the same beliefs. I probably would have been spouting exactly the same rhetoric. And so to listen to that is painful. I really want to say to her, shame on you for, you know, espousing such views. But then she believes these things. Yeah. She she's convinced. At no point where where are we going to have some empathy for these people who have died? Mm, yeah. Died a very, very meaningless and you know horrific death. Mm. I don't know if you've seen the videos of the young boy's father. Has any of you I, seen that? I'm gonna show I've that seen, in a minute. I've seen that. Yeah. Oh I've, it was I've, in it was in the news that came out yesterday. Yeah. Mm. Tessia. Something, uh, John, before, before we um, watch that other horrific uh, video, I'm reminded of Sam Harris uh, 
who has in the past in various uh, iterations said that the, the trouble with moderates is that moderate religious views enable this type of um, uh, statement. And yes. I, I want to uh, link with yeah. what you said. I often have 20 years ago made statements. And as, as long as we don't push back in a variety of ways, yeah. with humor, with ridicule, with uh, other forms of criticism, and decent conversations about concepts like uh, the fact that th there is no evidence that there's anything about us that continues to exist after our heart stops beating and our brain doesn't get any more um, oxygen. As long as we, those are the, th the conversations we need to have. Because if yes. a person is convinced that there is such a thing as everlasting life, then it's a very small step to take to that, to hold that view. And um, maybe, I don't know if it's possible to be sympathetic towards somebody who has that view by saying that I held that view myself and only now do I see how horrific it is. Yeah. But I think to get back to the real conversation and we need to have these conversations with moderates because the existence of moderate wrong beliefs enable terrible things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very true. If there is such a thing as evil, I don't think there is. In my mind, it's belief in the afterlife because it's the cause of so much harm, so much. Mm, well said. Uh, yeah. Mm. So we, we want to see, having seen this outrageous woman who doesn't care about the bodies of these poor victims, only about their mythical souls, let's take a look at the father of the shooter. See what outrage he's got to say. He's very difficult to understand, I warn you. There was a shooting involving, you know, there were multiple people. Right. And then I thought, later on, I thought, find it's a uh, gay bar. Yeah, right. And, and but I'm like, oh, God, is he gay? As a steroid, oh, God, shit, is he gay? <laughs> and he's not gay, so it's like, <laughs> so it's, Well, you guys have had conversations about that. You, you were... Oh, yeah, I was, you, you, I was you adamant. Him, yeah, you were adamant that gay is bad. I was is adamant, adamant. I yeah. say, I'm a Mormon. I'm a conservative Republican, and we don't do gay. Don't do yeah. gay. We don't do gay. Yeah. I can't get an answer. So the thing that he was concerned about, I don't know whether you could understand that, he was saying he heard that uh, his son had been involved in something, he heard that it was a gay bar, and he said, shit, is he gay? That was the thing that bothered him, not the fact that he'd killed five people and injured 25 others. And, uh, and then he went on to announce that he's anti-gay because he's a Mormon, a conservative Republican. He's a, he's a scary guy, that fellow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And right -wing. next week's news, he's going to be discovered in some sort of gay club again and <laughs> as a patron or something. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. People don't get that hateful of other people. It's only because they hate themselves that they get oh, this exactly. riled up. When, when I see people going in so hard against gay people, mm. I side-eye them and yes. put an eye on, the, on yes. them because... So um, many of so, them have someone, been revealed, someone, haven't they? Yes. Someone, sh someone shared a story with <laughs> us. Uh, he's a gay activist from Nigeria. He was he, When he was younger, when he started to express his his you know his if being a feminine he would get a lot of attacks from people around him mm -hmm. where he lived when he was walking down the street they'll be howling at him you know and mm -hmm. saying yeah. things at him and all these things you know mm -hmm. but then the main person the one who was uh the the instigator the one who would get everyone together to do all of this at night would come knocking at his door yeah asking him to let him in for mm. a bit of something mm. and he said he was a very good looking man and mm. yeah and why not he's been offered this um free just on a plaza you know so yeah he would let him in they would do their thing and the next very next day he'll be back yeah. howling at him and pointing but 
you know, for him, I think it was have been something of a, uh, you know, I don't know if just looking at this man and thinking, what a hypocrite. Later yes, tonight, you'll be back. I, I couldn't do that. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be with someone who is the same one uh, yeah. attacking me during the day. I don't know how people do it. It couldn't be me. Yeah. But then, hey. Ted Haggard is the classic, isn't he? Oh, he, yes. Uh, he did a lot of raging against gays until he was caught out in, in the company of, um, uh, what do they call them? Uh, boys that you pay. I mean, rent, boy. rent boys, that's it. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry I don't know the language. <laughs> Not in that, Not in that yeah. group. So, that, that was all horrible. I'm going to lighten the mood a little bit now because the situation in Southern Ireland era is, it, it's been pretty horrible in education and health, but at last it's coming to the attention of people and there's some disquiet. That's as far as they've got, disquiet. But this is what's caused the disquiet. 90% of Irish primary schools are under Catholic patronage, but are state funded. And they have Catholic faith formation as part of their curriculum. And that's the primary school, but approximately 50% of secondary schools operate under the Catholic ethos. Now that's education. It's not just education. The Sisters of Mercy Dublin Hospital stated that a Catholic voluntary public health care can exist, flourish and develop into the future, providing a parallel an alternative option to that of the state system. The trouble is, they expect their parallel and alternative health system to be funded by the state in a secular Irish government constitution. So that's, that's very odd. But fortunately, it's become a source of intense public disquiet. When it was released recently that the new 1 billion euro publicly funded maternity hospital would be owned by a private company. What's the state doing? Building things and giving them away. Mm. So a former master at the National Maternity Hospital, a guy called Peter Boylan, says the Catholic Church is fully entitled to provide health and education but if it wants a parallel and alternative option to that of the state delivered according to its ethos, it shouldn't be funded by the state. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we have a, a similar problem in England with faith schools, and it's, it's yeah. a major problem that the, the vast majority, and in some cases the, the, the entirety of their funding comes from the state. Yes. But control is handed or allowed to, to continue to be, at least in part, um, mm. for, uh, uh, with 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 one or other uh, of a faith uh, organisation, either Methodists, Catholics, Anglicans. There are some Jewish and also some yeah. Muslim faith schools. Yeah, and it, yeah. It, it, and it, it's just all wrong. I I object to my tax pounds. Yes. Being, um, handed over to faith organizations. It's just not on. Well said. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. Well, it looks like we're going to finish within the the um, target time for once, which is good. So I'm just going to end harking back to what um, Esther was telling us about the the hats of the clerics in Iran. Take a look at this. this is, you'll like this. به توفیق الهی قرنها این نظام گفتیم باسه محساس این یکی هم باسه انجام وزیفه به توفیق It's nice to see the clerics being disrespected, isn't it, eh? <laughs> Bring it on. At least, at least they still have their lives. They still have their lives intact. 
Mm. At least they still have their lives intact, unlike Masa, yes. Masa Amini. Yes. You know, just Indeed. simply for not putting on the um, yes. mm. uh, the hijab properly. Yes. Lost their life. At least they get to, that's to, to, to live another day. That, indeed, that's a very good point because quite often we get accused of being aggressive or militant atheists. And what we're doing is using a keyboard to put messages up. And that's very different from the gunshots that the, the other side are using on us. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, guys, True. thank you very much. Any other comments before I play the outro? Wonderful seeing everybody. Good seeing everyone. Absolutely. I, 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 I'm, I've come to the conclusion uh, we need I'm a competition. Maybe. <laughs> Go on. C can I have a final word about the phrase militant atheism? I, I'm, I listened to a, an interesting debate the week, and um, somebody. But militant atheism they deconvert people from their faith. Uh, the interviewer said, well, it's funny that you talk, what do you refer to as militant atheism? And the person couldn't really answer and he said, it's funny because I've never received any leaflets under my door. I've never received leaflets on my window shield um, uh, oh. proclaiming that faith is bad. But I've received many dozens of books on my door from Christians who tell me I'm going to hell. Uh, mm. and, and, and that's very true. I think perhaps um, it, we atheists get a little bit more militant just to people uh, what militant atheism looks like. I mean, I've never knocked on anybody's door trying to deconvert them from their faith. Mm. So I think we need to redefine the term militant atheism. Yeah. Uh, that, that many really. Christians find so offensive, you know. We're doing the best we can with these shows. Frank. <laughs> well, I've got to say, we should maybe use the phrase militant theism. You know, they're, yeah, they're yeah. That's already, those are already hand in hand in my head. Yeah, yeah. What a better, yeah. what could be a better match than yeah. peanut butter? Militant yeah. superstition. Yeah. Yes. yeah militant yeah. militantism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I love yeah. that. Militant superstition. Mm. <laughs> That's the term of the yeah. week. On that note, guys, say goodbye. Oh. Bye bye. 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 Goodbye, everybody. Several clergy uh, <laughs> was, was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say?